In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural rock cave wall material in Blender. This procedural material can be purchased on my Gumroad store, and all of my patrons over on my Patreon page also get access to the procedural material. So I will have the links in the description if you'd like to purchase the project files. And that's a great way to help support me and this channel. And another great way to help support this channel is by checking out my Blender procedural material packs. So I create many procedural materials using Blender's procedural nodes, and so every time I create another 10 procedural materials, I compile them together into a Blender procedural material pack. So again, I'll have the links in the description if you'd like to check out those material packs, and that's a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And some great ways to help support me here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships with the join button right down there next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, you can also send me a super thanks underneath this video. So before we create the procedural material, I did just want to show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I pressed Shift A and I went here to Mesh and I added an Icosphere. And then right behind me, if you click on the little Add Icosphere Settings and open this up, I turned up the subdivisions and then I just shaded the object smooth and this way I have a nice smooth subdivided sphere that I can add the material onto. And I am also going to be using the displacements in the node editor, so I do want this to be subdivided so it has lots of detail. And then I also added a camera and just pointed the camera at the sphere. Now for the lighting, I added in these two lights right here. So this first light right over here is just a plain light and it has an emission material to it. And I gave the emission material a very slight blue color with a strength of 80. And this light will give a nice blue or rim light to the sphere. And then for the main light over here, I added another plane and I gave it a subsurf modifier so that it is round. And then I gave this one an emission material as well. And this one has a slight yellow color with a strength of 40 to give some nice bright lighting on the sphere. And then to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections over here on the world, I added in this Gamrig 1K HDR. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI and I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So if you go right here to the world properties, you can add a new world, and then right here on the color, you can click on the yellow dot, and then you can go right over here and choose environment texture, and then just click on open and open up the HDRI. Now I do want the material to actually displace the mesh to make the rocks more jagged and make them more popping out. So if you wanna use the displacements, then you will need to use the cycles rendering engine. And then I am also going to be using the adaptive subdivision. So if you wanna use the adaptive subdivision, then right here on the feature set, you're going to need to set the feature set to experimental to use the adaptive subdivision. And then to add the adaptive subdivision, you're going to go right over here to the modifier properties, and you're going to click on add modifier, and you're just going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And then if you turn to the experimental mode on, you can check mark the adaptive subdivision. So what this is going to do is it's going to add more detail where you're closer up, where the camera can actually see the model but then farther away there's going to be less detail. And then this object right here is already pretty subdivided so I don't need the detail to be super small so on the dicing scale right here I'm just going to set this to a value of 10. All right so we now need to add a material and then we need to tell the material to use the displacements. So with this object selected I'm going to click on new here and I'm going to rename this to rock cave wall. So now I'm going to click right here to go to the material properties and I'm going to go right here and open up the settings tab. So open up the settings tab and go to surface. So right here on the displacement, we need to click on the bump only and we need to change this to displacement and bump. So this is telling this material that it can use the displacements. And I have the 3D space right here and I'm in the rendered view. So you can hold down the Z button and move your mouse up into the rendered view. And then right over here, I have the shader editor so we can actually create the procedural material. And then there is just one more thing before we get started. I am going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can just click on Edit, and then you can go to the Preferences. And then right over here on the Add-ons tab, you can go right here to the Search, and you can search for the Node Wrangler, and just checkmark the Node Wrangler add-on. And then you can close the User Preferences. So I'm going to start off by pressing Shift-A, and I'm going to go right here to the Search, and I'm going to start by adding a Voronoi Texture. So you can search for the Voronoi Texture, and I'm going to drop it here. And then because we turned on the Node Wrangler add-on, I can control Control shift and select different nodes and that's going to add the viewer node and we can preview the 
node on the object. So there's a few different settings that I want to change here. I want to click on the F3 and I want to change this to F4. And then right over here on the F1, I want to instead change this to F2. And you can see now that texture has changed a little bit. And then I also want to click on this bottom option right here. And I want to instead change this to the Manhattan. Now I also want to use the object coordinates. So with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm going to press Control T. So that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. That's using another feature from the Node Wrangler add-on. And then I don't actually need the mapping because the mapping is used to transform the texture. I'm just going to click on the mapping and then I can press X to delete it. Now I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. So I'm going to take the object and let's stick that into the vector. And then I also want to change the scale here on the Voronoi. So let's take the scale value and I'm going to turn this to like a 3.8. All right, so this texture here is going to be the base for the jaggedy rocks, but I do want to make this texture much more organic and random, and I want to add more noise and more detail. So to do this, I'm going to add a noise texture, and then we're going to make the noise texture so it distorts the placement of the Voronoi. So to do this, let's press Shift A. I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the noise texture, and we're going to stick the noise texture right up here. And then let's Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And then I also want to use the object coordinates on the noise texture so it's placed more evenly on the object. So you can pull out a wire and put the object into the vector. Now I want to make the noise texture much more detailed, so let's turn the scale to like A6, and then I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. So I'm now going to make the noise texture distort the placement of the Voronoi. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A, and let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the Mix RGB, and we're going to stick the Mix RGB right here after the Voronoi. So now I'm going to take the color here from the noise texture, and I'm going to stick this into color 2. And and then the object coordinates is going to go into color one. So I'm now going to control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. So if I turn the factor value all the way to zero, it's just going to use the object coordinates, which is color one. But then if I turn the factor all the way up to one, it's just going to use the noise texture, which is going into color two. Now, as I move the factor value, if you look at the texture, you can see it's moving around a lot. So to fix this, I'm going to click on the mix here, and I'm going to instead change this to the linear light. This way, the texture is going to stay at the same spot. So now you can see what that's doing. Now, I want to take the factor value, and I'm going to turn this to like a 0.1. And this way, it's only using the noise texture a little bit. If you zoom in here, you can see it's mostly using the Voronoi texture, but there is just a little bit of noise there. And this is going to make the rock cave wall look a little bit more organic and natural. Now, I also want to add this noise texture into the actual color of the texture. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for another mix RGB and we're going to stick the mix RGB right here. So what I want to do now is I want to take the factor from the noise texture and we are going to plug this into color one of this mix and then the Voronoi texture distance is going to go into color two and then the factor value is going to blend between only using the noise texture and only using the Voronoi. Now I want to change the factor to like a 0.3 so it's actually using a little bit more of the noise texture but it is using some of the Voronoi. So now we have a texture with even more noise. All right, so I can now take the color from this mix and I'm going to put this into the base color. And then I also want this to affect the roughness so that some parts are a little bit more rough and some parts are a bit more shiny. So let's also take the color from this mix and we're going to put that into the roughness of the principle. And then I want to preview the principled shader. So I'm going to control shift and select the principled shader to preview that. And then I'm just going to box select these nodes and bring them over a little bit. So this is just looking very white right now, so I do want to change the colors. So to change the colors, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and I'm going to click on the color ramp and I'm going to stick it right here between the mix and the base color. So we can now change the colors here in the color ramp and that's going to actually change the colors of the texture. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this drop down arrow right here and I'm going to click on a flip color ramp. This way it's going to switch the colors and so you can see that texture much better. And then I'm going to take this black tab and I'm going to drag it out a little bit. 
out. And by dragging it out, it's gonna make it more contrasty and we're gonna be able to see more of that dark color. Now this is a rock material, so I don't want it to be white, I want it to be much more gray. So I'm gonna click on the white tab here and then I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna make this a dark gray. And if you'd like to use the same color that I'm using, right over here on the hex value, you can punch in a hex value of 575757. So that is the gray color that I'm using. And then this one right over here, this is just gonna be fully black. So you can set the hex value to six zeros. So I also wanna have more control of the roughness. So let's press Shift A, I'm gonna to go to the search, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp, and we're just gonna stick the color ramp right here between the mix and the roughness. And then let's click on this white tab and I want to make this a little bit darker so I'm going to make this a little bit darker and you can see as I make it darker it's going to make the material more and more shiny so I just want to make it slightly darker but it's still going to be mostly white and the white color that I'm going to be using is going to be a hex value of six E's so you can punch in E six times on the hex value if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using and then I also want to make the darks just a little bit brighter so I'm going to click on the black tab here and I'm going to make this color just a a little bit brighter but it's still going to be pretty dark and the hex value that I'm using for this dark gray is going to be 262626. All right, so this still really doesn't look much like rock, and that is because it is so smooth. So I want to put a texture into the normal to give it some bump. So to do this, I'm going to take the distance from this Voronoi texture, I'm going to pull out a wire, and I'm going to put this into the normal. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues, and that is because this is black and white data, but this here is normal data. You can see this is a gray dot, whereas this is a purple dot. So I need to convert this data into normal data so the principled shader can actually use it. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node. We're going to stick the bump node right here in between this wire. And then to actually convert this to normal data, we want to put the distance into the height value of the bump. And now that looks much more like rock. Now this is pretty strong, so on the strength value, I'm just going to turn this way down to like a 0.1. Now that does look very subtle and that's not very strong, but when we add the texture into the displacement, the displacement is going to add a bunch more detail and a bunch more noise. So I'm just going to leave this at 0.1, but you could turn it up if you want to. So now to make this material look really cool, we're going to be putting some data into the displacement to act actually bump out the mesh. So I'm going to take the distance here from the Voronoi, let's pull out a wire, and I'm going to stick this into the displacement of the material output. Now you can see it is working, but something weird is happening, it's all stretched and it's going off to the side, and that is because just like with this bump node, this needs to be displacement data, but this is just black and white data. So we need a node in here to convert the data to displacement data. So let's press Shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the displacement node, and we're just going to stick the displacement node right here in this wire, so stick it there, and then I'm just gonna drag the displacement node down so that it is underneath the principled shader. And then there is a bit of an overlap with this wire here, so if you want to, you can hold down the shift key and you can right click and drag along this wire and let go. That's going to add a reroute and I can just drag the reroute over here, just to make the preview look a bit nicer. All right, now if I look at the material, you can see it's not really working. You can see it's just displacing the object over to the side, and that is because because we need to actually put the distance value into the height. So right here, I'm just gonna pull out this wire from the normal, and I'm gonna stick it into the height value of the displacement. And now you can see it is actually converting that to proper displacement data, and so now that is popping out from all sides. Now it is way too strong, and I wanna make it much more subtle, so let's take the scale value on the displacement, and I'm just gonna turn this down to like a 0.12. And now if I zoom in there, you can see it's definitely displacing it, especially if you look on the sides, you can see there's lots of bumpy bits, and there's all these little jagged bits on the cave wall. And that is it, so that is the procedural material. So I'll just give this a final render now. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel to help me keep on creating Blender tutorials and content, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. And you can also purchase this material on my Gumroad store, so the links will be in the description to the project files if you'd like to purchase them. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. Again, all the links are in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.